from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Wednesday, January the 3rd, 2018. Two more rockets were fired at Israel today from Gaza. The projectiles landed in open areas near the border fence with Gaza within Israel, and no damage or injury was reported. The rockets were sent to have been fired by the terror group Islamic Jihad. The IDF, as it has stated repeatedly, holds terror group Hamas responsible ultimately for any attacks emanating from Gaza as Hamas controls the Gaza Strip. And after the rockets today, the IDF targeted a number of Hamas terror positions in southern Gaza in response. And in the West Bank today, a violent demonstration where Palestinian rioters threw rocks at Israeli troops. One of the demonstrators, a 17-year-old Palestinian man, appeared to be holding a gun, according to IDF soldiers, and he was shot by Israeli troops. He later died of his injuries. The IDF is looking into the circumstances of that incident. And Israel's security agency, the Shin Bet, revealed today that it uncovered a terror cell operating in the West Bank, which was being financed by an Iranian intelligence operative living in South Africa. The cell, which was stationed near Hebron, was said to have been planning to carry out terror attacks and was collecting intelligence for Iran. The Shin Bet said several arrests of the cell's members were made back in November, but the information was only cleared for publication today. Legislation that would ease restrictions to enforce the death penalty for terrorists in Israel passed a preliminary reading today. The Knesset advanced the bill in a vote of 52 to 49. It would allow for capital punishment in extreme cases. While the death penalty does technically exist in Israeli law, it has only been used once, in 1962, in the case of notorious SS Nazi officer Adolf Eichmann. The U.S. suggested that it could stop funding a relief agency for the Palestinians if the Palestinians refused to sit down for peace talks with Israel. U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Nikki Haley spoke with reporters at U.N. headquarters in New York City yesterday, where she stressed the U.S. commitment to reaching a peace deal between Israel and the Palestinians. She was asked by a reporter whether the U.S. would continue to provide funding for UNRWA, the U.N.'s Relief and Works Agency, which provides aids to the Palestinians, to which she responded. I think the president um, has basically said that he doesn't want to give any additional funding um, or st stop funding until the Palestinians are agreeing to come back to the negotiation table. And what we saw with the resolution um, was not helpful to the situation. We're trying to move for a peace process, but if that doesn't happen, the president's not going to continue to fund that situation. Haley added that it was time for the Palestinians to show their will to move towards peace talks. As we've reported to you, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is leaving for India in just under two weeks. And joining his delegation will be the young son of Israeli terror victims. If you recall, back in 2008, during a spate of terror in Mumbai, two Chabad emissaries, Rabbi Gavriel and Rivka Holtzberg, were murdered at the Chabad house in the city, along with four other Jewish visitors. The Holtzberg's infant son, Moshe, was saved by a nanny and sent to live with his grandparents in Israel. Holtzberg, who is now 11, met with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi when he visited Israel back in July and told the leader that he missed India. Modi invited Moshe to return whenever he wants, and Netanyahu extended the invite for this upcoming official state visit on January the 14th. Four former and current flight attendants of Delta filed a lawsuit yesterday against the airlines alleging anti-Semitism. According to the complaint filed at Brooklyn Federal Court, Delta is accused of discriminating against both its Jewish and Israeli staff as well as passengers. In response, Delta said it strongly condemns the allegations of discrimination described in the lawsuit and will defend itself vigorously against them adding that they have zero tolerance for any sort of discrimination. And taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Wednesday, January the 3rd at 7 o'clock. It's from the Aleph Bet. 
At 7.45, movie actors, film critics, and Jewish thinkers analyze scenes from classic and contemporary films in cinema, the Jewish lens. At 8.30, it's Eye on Israel with host, executive director of Stand With Us Northeast, Shachar Azani. At 9, Mark Golub sits down with Israeli Arab Yahya Mahamid, who shares his story and his rarely heard perspective of advocating for Israel around the world as an educator for Stand With Us. At 10.30, Mosab Hassan Youssef, the son of a major Hamas leader turned Mossad agent, shares his perspective. And coming up right after this newscast tonight at 6.30, it's Thinking Out Loud with Micah Halpern. And that's the JBS News Update for Wednesday, January the 3rd, 2018. I'm Tisha Bader.